What is up, Nightcrawlers? Welcome back to the Nightmare's Edge. Thank you so much for stopping in. I truly appreciate you doing so. Today, I have a story that was written for me by my good friend Shade from Dark Little Voices. Thank you so much, Shade. I'm honored. Please be sure to check the description for the links to their socials and YouTube channel. Now, without any further ado, sit back, relax, and let me tickle those inner fears. I've never met my parents. However, my Aunt Zoe would tell me that they were great people. They were people who truly wanted to live life to the fullest, and that's what got them killed. She says that I was only two when it happened, and that's why I barely remembered them. That, in of itself, isn't what was truly bothering me. No, what was truly bothering me is my Aunt Zoe had multiple pictures of my father, but not of my mother. When I asked her why she only had pictures of my dad, but none of my mom or both of them together, she said, your mother must have locked them away somewhere because I've never seen them. I really wanted to accept that as an answer, but I couldn't. Some part of me, in the pit of my stomach, knew this was a bold-faced lie. Obviously, I wouldn't say that to Aunt Zoe's face, but my God did it cause my curiosity to grow like weeds. I told myself that I would wait till I got older and then hopefully find the truth out on my own because I knew Aunt Zoe was hiding something. I just couldn't figure out what. I went to school the following day and it must have been obvious on my face that I just couldn't let it go because my friend Alex stopped me to ask me if I was okay. I told him I was okay but that I just was lost in thought. Don't lose yourself too much man. Last time you did it, it took over a week to get you out of your head. And you missed your chance with Tina, he said as he nudged me to look a few feet in front of us. Tina was an average girl with long dark hair, milky white skin, and standing at five foot eight. I've had a crush on her since we were seven, but I've never had the guts to go up and talk to her. Now, it looked as if I missed my shot, as she was now standing in the hallway by the lockers with Tony Thompson. I had missed my chance because I was lost in thought. My mind lost itself in an endless sea of what my life could have been if I even knew my dad more than just word of mouth, let alone why no one seems to know anything about my mother. Tina had tried to ask me out, or so I was told, but apparently I just spaced out for most of it. I had tried to apologize several times, but the most I gotten was a cold shoulder and a colder, it's fine. A year later from the incident, and you would think that Alex would let it go. But no, he brings it up whenever he wants to pick on me, which is fine because we acted more like brothers than friends. Things started becoming unsettling as we got into our senior year. Rumors started to circulate that students in our high school were going missing, along with 14 men between the ages of 17 to 24. The thing that seemed to get everyone was that people seemed to believe Tina was involved somehow. I hadn't spoken to her much since the sophomore year, but that was because I was busy coming up with plans to break into Aunt Zoe's attic. The only place I didn't check for anything of my mom's. Yes, Aunt Zoe was my father's sister, but I figured there had to be something in the attic. She knew I hated spiders, but still put a padlock on the door leading into the attic. James, my man, I got good news for you. Took forever to get my cousin to cough it up, but I got it. I looked at him with curiosity as he pulled out a small black box. What is it? It's a lockpick kit. You needed one to get into your aunt's attic, remember? Alex always seemed to have my back, even when I was acting like a total airhead. My eyes lit up when I finally processed what he said. He showed me the tools. They looked a little worn out. Are you sure these will work? Hell yeah. My cousin even showed me how to use them. He said excitedly, so much so that it left concerns for his real intentions. So are we going to do this or not, man? Alex said as Tina walked over to us. Hey guys, what are you two up to? She said with a sly smile looking more to me than Alex. We're planning into breaking into James's aunt's attic. Ouch! He said as I hit him in the shoulder. We're just making plans to hang out this weekend. Well, that sounds fun. Maybe I can come over and bring some snacks. That is, if it's okay with you, 
she said with an alluring smile towards me. Hell yeah, sounds like a party, Alex said as he was trying to practically push me into her arms. Great, I thought to myself as I wondered how the hell we're going to go through with this plan. To fill you in, the plan was to wait until my aunt left for the weekend on a business trip, sneak into the attic, and see if I could finally see why she tried to keep my mother a secret from me. Now that my former crush was coming, I wasn't sure I was going to be able to focus. Something about Tina attracted me to her, but also left me uneasy. It made me feel as if I were looking at a beautiful flower, but one that was holding something deadly back. I looked at Alex like, what did you do? After Tina left, he simply said, Hey man, you can thank me at your wedding. Or at your funeral. I said a bit bitter that this was going to be a little more difficult than I thought it would, but still hopeful that I could finally get with Tina. As I thought about that, I wondered if the guys that Tina dated were the same ones who went missing. I know I should have looked into this a bit more since she was coming over and all. All Alex could think of was hooking me up, but my mind went to other places. The week went by uneventfully as I kept anticipating what was in the attic and prepared myself for disappointment if all that was up there was old clothes and CDs or something to that degree. Aunt Zoe gave her usual lecture of no friends over and no wild parties while she was gone, how much was left on the table for takeout, that she loves me, etc. I pretended to care, but it was hard to when I knew she was hiding something. I just didn't know what. I was 18 and still treated like a kid, minus a babysitter. It wasn't exactly what I was calling winning any favors. Anyway, Alex and Tina came over hours later after I texted them to say it was safe to come over. We hung out as I gave Tina a tour of the house. However, as Tina and I walked around, I got a bad feeling in the pit of my stomach. It didn't help when I heard something large walking around above us on the second floor, where the attic happened to be. Did you hear that? I said to Tina. What the hell was that? She asked as she held my hand. I'm not sure. I've never had that happen before. I said as I held her hand tight. We could hear what sounded like multiple feet moving around above us, but it didn't sound human. Just then, we heard what sounded like something ascending the stairs. Tina and I held each other tightly. As we kept hearing footsteps, we ran into Aunt Zoe's room, completely forgetting about Alex. Guys, where did you go? He shouted for us. We blushed and laughed to ourselves as we realized we were being stupid. As we came out of the room, he immediately picked on us with assumptions that we went to have some private time in my aunt's room. After a lot of back and forth banter, Alex sighed peacefully and said, So, are we ready for the main event? As he pulled the lockpick tools out, suddenly I kept feeling like it was a mistake and yet I couldn't explain why. Despite that feeling, I regret pushing it down to the pit of my stomach. We got to the ladder and Alex began to work the lock. It took maybe 20 seconds for him to pop the lock open. However, a god-awful smell protruded from the attic. We ended up gagging so bad that I thought we were going to puke. Alex, trying not to vomit on the wooden floor, shouted, All you, bro, and ran to the bathroom. Tina composed herself the best she could and said, Well, ladies first as she handed me a flashlight. I covered my nose and mouth with my shirt to the best of my abilities. I slowly went up the ladder. There were so many spider webs as I finally entered that I couldn't see much. Hey, bring me a broom, please. There should be one in the kitchen. I shouted below where I thought she still was, but no one was there. Stupidly, I thought the smell had just got the better of her and just used my shirt to remove the webs hoping and praying to God that spiders wouldn't somehow cover my body. It took sheer willpower to press on, but I did, and what I saw burns in my memories. Corpses littered the attic floor. That's when I screamed and ran for help, but that's when Tina and Alex stood there with a strange look on their faces, the way a predator looks at its prey before the kill. Guys, we need to... Wait, you're both in on this, aren't you? I said with fear in my voice. Give the space cadet a medal. 
Honestly, James, I thought you would have sensed it ages ago, but I guess we're better hunters than you, Alex said as he looked at Tina. Hope there's no hard feelings, little brother. Just personal things like that bitch, Zoe, kept getting in the way. Before I could speak, the loud footsteps Tina and I heard earlier slowly crept their way towards us, and then I heard a voice that felt as familiar as my own heartbeat. My sweet Zoxied, how I've longed to see you. Do you understand now, Zoxied? You and mother were taken from us, but now we get to be together as a family. The creature known formally as Alex said as he walked closer to me. Stay the fuck away from me. None of this makes any sense. I said, trying to move away from them. That's when I saw ancient symbols written around the creature that acted like it knew me. Zoxied, I'm your older sister, Kalika. That woman there is our mother who our father knew as Nyko. We lost our eldest sister when mother was attacked by that Buddhist bitch Zoe. As the creature spoke, I tried to retaliate, but I simply couldn't. The fear gripped my throat. We are taking you both home, Zoxied, Alex said as he held out his hand. Suddenly, Alex screamed in pain as a harpoon went into his hand. Oh good, the rest of you are here. Now I get to make her suffer as I suffered. Aunt Zoe shouted as we all began to feel the pain from her prayer beads. In Tina's struggle to keep herself together, she accidentally walked onto one of the seals keeping Nyko behind the barrier, causing her to scream in pain as she burst into flames. Clicka! Mother shouted as she went into a frenzy. So much so that even her skin burned, she still rushed Aunt Zoe. In her fit of rage, she didn't notice Aunt Zoe's weapon that looked like some kind of modern crossbow, nor did she realize who stepped in the middle of them. My mother came down with a fatal blow to the woman I called Aunt Zoe, but in the exchange, both her and Alex took the shot from whatever weapon Aunt Zoe had. I immediately had flashbacks to the fact that even though we didn't always get along, Aunt Zoe was the only one who cared for me and raised me. Then I found out that she only used me to torment the very being I craved to learn about. The people I cared about most in this world had essentially killed themselves for their own reasons. Aunt Zoe to avenge my father, Tina, or Klicka, and Alex to save our mother, and Nyko to get back at Aunt Zoe for all the blood and torment she caused. I screamed in anger, sadness, and fear. I screamed and cried till I just couldn't anymore. I wish I could shed more light on everything, but they were all dead. I could feel my body changing to a spider-like being that humans called the Jorogamo. I thought it would take a while to get used to everything this new body would offer, but it felt as natural as breathing. A few years later, I was approached by a man in a suit who I almost killed, till he immediately offered a deal that very well interested me. A new life where I could live like the human I used to be. In exchange, I helped the organization whenever they needed me. I scoffed at the idea at first, but the more I lingered on the idea of it, the more I couldn't say no. He even asked me what to call me. I gave up on the name James and went with my father's name, Norman Carter. Once again, thank you all so much for watching. Shade, thank you so much. I am honored that you would write a story for me. And again, be sure to check the description for links to their YouTube channel and socials. Be sure to show them some love. But until next time, remember, just because you couldn't see it, doesn't mean it wasn't watching you.